Okay, we are here at the Romford Film Festival. I am here with the lovely Sharon Turner for the third year in a row. Am I right? We did two in 2018 and then uh, Lou presented an award last year and then I'm back this year with a yes, film. That's it, that's it. It's just because you're here all the time. I do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, I should add that Cheryl is like one of our best film festival attendees, but it's even better when she submits a film. And you are here today because you have sent us the general, which we have just screened. Nobody probably watching this would have seen your film. Do you want to just tell the audience a little bit about the film, what the synopsis is? Sure. Um, so it's about this lovely guy called Martin who's very much in love with his fiance and Julie and has proposed to her but she said that she won't marry him unless he gets an STI test. Um, so he goes to the doctor for an STI checkup and with hilarious consequences. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so where, where did this, this wonderful idea come from? So my good friend Tristan, he um, is putting together an anthology series called Suitors. Um, uh, so they can be standalone short films, but then he's going to package them all together. And he wrote to me a couple of years ago and said, all right, so here's the premise basically. It's maximum of like three characters in a room. It's basically exploring like modern masculinity and what that is. Mm -hmm. It can only be one location. Yeah, maximum of three characters, maximum like 10 minutes, have a go. Which was great because I've never written in like parameters like that before, so that was really enjoyable. Excellent. And um, what about your? So let's start off with your filming locations because the film is set in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Did you actually film in a hospital? We did. So Graham, who plays the doctor, actually is a doctor. Right. Okay. And we filmed in Derby, uh, where he like in the hospital but not they weren't like real patients there they also have a training wing so we got to a, just have a whole day so we did it in one day in this training room um yeah and we they just kind of left us alone it was brilliant and being a doctor that kind of explains why he was so convincing in his role doesn't it yes because he is an actual doctor yes yes, yes. He is. so lots of the things that happened in it he actually told us had happened as well because I did wonder about some of the dialogue. I was thinking to myself, would a doctor actually say that? So it's like really interesting that the doctor would actually say it. But he was absolutely great. He's so good, yeah. And he's not an actor either. Like he, like he is a genuine doctor. So that's why he was so good with keeping a straight face and because he's just like, I've heard everything. And he was, he was actually doing a rectal exam and somebody said to him, you've got slim fingers, do you play the piano? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so bizarre. So yes, so that, that is one of the lines in Cheryl's film. Uh, I don't know quite what to say to that. Oh, it's Isn't it? It's brilliant. It is br that's the stuff I love. I love the stuff when we're like at our most vulnerable. And that's such a, do you know what I mean? It's such a vulnerable place to be. This guy's like so in love with his fiance. And then obviously he's having a recto exam at the same time. And I just, that yeah, that's the like messy, I was going to say like messy, juicy stuff, but I'm really not trying to get too visceral with it. But that is the stuff I find really, really interesting. And the fact that that was a genuine comment from a patient, I just think it's brilliant. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, what I'd like to talk to you about now, very briefly, is Mamata. Oh, yes. So, because two years ago you came to Romford Film Festival with Mamata, and we were like your first screening, yeah. I believe. You picked up your first award, yeah. and then something magical happened because your film literally went everywhere didn't it do you want to just quickly tell us about a little bit where where it went and your journey and all that sort of stuff sure and um, well we had two at the same time we shot two films within six months mind f star hashtag k for the purposes of youtube um, and mama tar um, so we shot them at the same time and then we festivaled them at the same time which was great so some festivals wanted both, some just wanted Mamata, some just wanted Mind FK, which was really, really interesting. Um, so we did like 2018 and 2019, we just, we spent so much money. We just festivaled as much as we possibly, possibly, possibly could because they were our first films and we were just like, let's just see if people like them. And we were really lucky to get into lots of festivals, which was great, all different ones, um, like UK ones. I was living in America at the time, so we did some there. Um, Berlin Sci-Fi 
festival really interestingly and then um yeah so now it they somebody saw Mama Tower in a festival in France and wanted to distribute it which was great and then they said what else have you done so we said about um Mind FK as well and they went well send us that and then they've taken both of them on and wow. so now they're starting to be played in like France and Spain quite a bit a really yeah which is really really cool Mama Tower's big in France Mind FK is big in Spain. I don't know what that says about those two nationalities, but um, yeah, it's really, really lovely. Like they've both done much more than we were ever expecting. We just wanted to have a go at making some films. So, so now you're back in the UK. Yes. Um, are you thinking about making more films, or are you looking at some sort of change? Well, I shot something last because the general we did. I did that with Tristan in 2018 when I was back for six months because I was having surgery um, and then we were in film festivals so that was really really fun and then I shot something when I was home last summer because I've never been to film school so each thing I'm trying to push myself so the general was about shooting in one room and about moving the camera and me learning how to do that because I've never done that before and then last year I shot um, it might surprise you it's a dark comedy and um, it's about sperm stealing and IVF because again, I like all of that really vulnerable stuff. Um, so I shot that with Tristan and a really good friend from uni, Paula, and Matt, who's in the general. And I wanted to be in something that I was also directing, because I was an actor for a really, really long time, and I'd never done that before. And I wanted to shoot something in a flat and make it look gorgeous as much as possible, you know, because sometimes, we, you know, as indie filmmakers, we're really limited by our budgetary constraints and to do it without spending any money and I was really really lucky like um, my cousin's friend lets have his flat in Woolwich so it was beautiful so like production value wise it looks amazing yeah. but obviously we did it for like you know beer and pizzas and um, so we've just finished that this year um, but I'm also having a huge life change <laughs> I'm retraining as like a personal performance coach and the next couple of years, it's really all about mortgage, marriage, babies. That's the, I'm 39, it's time. It's time for all of that stuff. So two years ago, and I'm pretty sure I asked you this question about, because it was the thing that I was asking everyone two years ago, which was the state of filmmaking at that moment in time. Mm. Being as now, it's with everybody's, within everybody's grasp, to make a film. What do you think is happening to the film industry from an independent perspective? Do you think it's a good thing? Or do you think it's a bad thing? Do you think the quality is improving or do you think the quality is lowering? That's a good question. I think it's brilliant that we can all learn through doing, which is very much my motto anyway, and, and that not everybody has to go to film school. I think that's fantastic. I still think there's a lot, you know, I've lived in LA for six years, I lived in New York for four years, I think, still think there's so much nepotism in the industry anyway, of people, you know, that are getting paid to do their art and to make films. I think what we'll see now, because of COVID, is a lot of things shot on phones in flats, and that's okay, but, but what's been really lovely about being here this weekend is to see some really beautiful things on a big screen. Like I, I feel like there, there's only so much of like oh lockdown films in our flats that that I want to watch personally as a, as an audience member. I still I don't know. It's amazing because sometimes like you see some really huge budget films and you come out and you just like that. I, I feel like somebody's just stolen my evening. Like and and there's been like 140 million sent, spent on a film and that blows my mind that absolutely blows my mind I think I'm not really answering your question I'm just sort of rambling I think it's brilliant that everyone has access to film I really wish more people had like I, I still think loads of voices are underrepresented in the industry I, I want to see more diversity of all sorts in the industry just so that the stories are different like I remember years ago in LA I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself from two years ago, but I remember like, you know, being in traffic because it's LA and I passed, I don't know, about 12 movie billboards and every single one was like a white dude in his 50s and a gun on the poster, every single one. And I love all these actors, but like Tom Cruise, Liam Neeson, still angry, Sean Bean, Sh Sean Penn, like every single one. And I was like, oh, I, and I do feel there's been a bit of a shift since then, but I think there's still a long way to go and actually, 
I feel like it's the independent filmmakers that will get to push that more, but then obviously we need money to do that. Well, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> and uh, as always, it's been a pleasure. It's been lovely having you here as part of the festival, as always. You're like a little festival family, <laughs> except without the hugs, because of social distancing. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, great. And um, we look forward to what you're going to somehow get to us next year, even in the new system. Thank you.